What's up, guys? Welcome back. We're here with Chris and Naomi from the Steel City Music Showcase. I'm your host, Derek, with my lovely co-host, Dead Hand. How are you guys doing today? I'm good. Doing pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Of course, man. Thanks for your time. Thanks for being here. Dead Hand, uh, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm just chilling. It's been really cool getting to know the musicians a little bit better. What'd y'all do today? Uh, worked. Fun? Yes. Yeah. Worked. Yeah. So yes. What do you guys do? Uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I work at help desk support at a credit union. So actually, I, went, I had to go to our headquarters in Broomfield. So oh. I drove to Broomfield six in the morning, and then did what I had to do. Came back here, ate dinner, uh, sat down for a second, said, "Please don't fall asleep. Please don't fall asleep." So I got here early. <laughs> What'd so, you eat? Can uh, I guess? Sure. Yeah. Um, fish sticks. No, <laughs> I had soup. Dang, that's yeah. close. Dude. Yeah, nice. What do you do for work? Um, I am a general admin assistant at a church here in town. Nice. So, all of the above, like anything that's needed to like run the church in it, in and of itself. So, yeah. Yeah. It gets pretty busy. Always something different too, I'm sure. Oh, every day. Like today I like ran a funeral meeting. So yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it changes based what is, on the what day. does that consist of? Oh gosh. Um honestly, like just working with the family primarily is like what you'll have to do, like comforting them, but then like you go through what they want to do for the funeral, like what their loved one's wishes were, like mm -hmm. all of all of the things. And then you get to see like family dynamics pop out and it gets kind of crazy. Um, but it's 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 a good thing because you could be like a like the calm in the storm because mm -hmm. like people don't know what like what to expect for that. Like the peacekeeper. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's wild. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your music. Um, yeah, so I'll start. But um. So I have been into music for pretty much all of my life. Um, my mom was probably the person who instilled that in me the most. Um, she was like a part of choirs. She, um, she and her family are very musically talented. And so like when I was little, I always watched them do a ton of musical things. And then um, I started to get into it myself like at a very young age. Um, like I can remember my first like choir concert solo and things like that super cool oh. um how old were you for that oh i was like in first grade so like i was like that's so probably cute. like six or something um so that was really awesome but from there like i um learned i taught myself how to play piano and guitar um and then have kind of been um working on music myself like writing that's been something that has been like really important and close to my heart um for for probably about like four years now. So that's been something that I've been trying to develop. And then me and my friend Kayla, who is gonna be um, joining me at the festival, we just really click with with music. Um, and so we're both going to be um, doing that together at the festival. And she's gonna be playing guitar. I'm gonna be playing piano. Yeah, um, we're probably fun. gonna do some of her songs because she's an original artist too. And so uh, that's like gigs right now have been really fun to do more Very recently. Cool. What's the duo so. called? Um, we actually, like this is our second gig total together. So we actually don't have a name. So it's like Kayla Slaughter and Naomi Zia. Like that's, those are Whoa. just our full names. So if Your you last guys have name a name is Slaughter? Mine is, so mine is Zolani? Zia Amadi actually. Okay. And so hers is uh, Slaughter. Um, There's yeah. a lot you could work with on a I band know. name there. I know. Do you guys have any suggestions? Slaughters with a Z. Slaughter. 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 Ooh, okay. Slaughter, okay. yeah. 10%, 10%. 10 and 10 then 10 it's like people are expecting maybe some like heavy music. And yeah. Like, yeah, it's a lot of like here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be the best part. Yes. What about your music? Tell us a little bit. Yep. So I'm a drummer. I'm in the Rage Tones. Uh, we're like a pop punk, pop rock band. Um, and actually, the band as a whole has been together in like different forms since like 2011. Mm -hmm. And um, I I met Jesse and Trey, two of the founding members, when I was in a different band called At Your Worst. And now it was like a post-hardcore band. That's like Warped Tour music yeah. know, with the screaming and singing and all that stuff. And then that band didn't work out. Um, Jesse was in it for a little bit. So then after that band broke up, he was like, so mm -hmm. do you guys want to do the raised tones with me and Trey and make it like a full rock band. Cause at that point it was just the two of them. They were acoustic, a saxophone and guitar, Yeah, which was cool, but we were like, okay, let's make it a rock band again. So then, um, so then we started doing that like 2019, late 2018. 
And then um, we had our friend Taryn fill in on saxophone for a tour because Trey's a family man, which yeah. we love. But it's like, yeah, you can't just go on tour when you yeah. have kids and a wife. So it's like, um, so she filled right. in and then we're like, well, she's really good. And then we asked her, please, 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 will you be in our band? And yeah. she's been in the band since. And yeah, we've like done different sounds. We like, we all listen to a lot of different stuff. Um, so we have songs that are like indie, songs that are a little heavier, songs that are very poppy. So we kind of just do whatever and we all write different parts and bring all our parts to each other and we all like help each other finish the song. So it's really collaborative. Yeah, I love so. that. We were talking about the saxophone earlier. Yeah. Definitely. I'm excited to see that. I'll be there with you. Yeah, the it, it's cool. Yeah. Um, and back in the day, the Rage Tones was a ska band, mm -hmm. but we are not. A I didn't ska, know that was yeah. an official statement. Yeah, we are not a ska band. <laughs> like, I love ska, but just because we have a sax doesn't mean we're a ska band. You know, that's always what I think uh, with horn sections. I'm yeah. Like, they're, they're ska now. Yeah, because uh, it's funny. We actually, we posted a clip from one of our music videos on TikTok, because that's what you have to do when you're a band now. And people are like, oh, look, at this This is great ska. And Taryn had the saxophone in her hand, did not play it once <laughs> oh during that God. section of the song. So it's like people just see it and they assume. We love ska, but we're not ska anymore. I wanted to go on the record to say that. <laughs> it's official now. How yeah. involved are you with uh, posting your clips and stuff on TikTok? So for, for our TikTok, Taryn's really taking it over. I do my own content and uh, that's enough for me. Um, because yeah, honestly, fair. like I like making content. I like doing my own stuff. My stuff is sometimes music related. It's more like skits and comedy and stuff. But honestly, like, tell us about it. What do you, what's your comedy entail? Uh, well, a lot of it actually, when I started, it was like related to like this pop punk emo like subculture that I'm in, and uh, it was kind of just like those like if you if you know you know type things. Like you're at a show and this happens and that happens. It's like. Um, it's just like, they always say like, write about what you know. Mm -hmm. like, that's what I know. Cause I got into this music when I was like f 13, 14, just trying to impress some friends. They're like, oh, do you know what Blink-182 is? I'm like, uh, yeah, of course I do. And then I went home and like Googled them. Right. And then I was like, oh, this is actually really good. And it's like, oh, I actually know some of these songs. And then yeah. I just got really into it. Cause that, you know, that's the time when you're like trying to figure out who you are. And I was like, oh, this is going to be who I am now. Yeah. And yeah, so, so that's mostly what it's about. And then. It's just like stream of consciousness, whatever like little funny idea I, I have, I just, I make that. So thankfully my bandmates are taking care of like our socials because I'm like, I have my own stuff to do. And like, it, it's, it's frustrating being a musician now sometimes when it comes to like trying to have reach, it's like, you have to do the content. You have mm. to like play the game. And it's like, sometimes like, I just, I just want to write the music. I just want to play the shows. Yeah. But it's like, it's, there's so much great music, which is cool, but there's so much that you have to find a way to get people to listen. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's so true. Are you into any of that or do you reject social media? <laughs> no, I don't reject social media at all. And I think it's a very useful tool, but I think it has its drawbacks, especially when it becomes like, that's like the drawback and being creative sometimes is where it can, ha it comes more, becomes more about like, the posting side of things rather than the creating side of things where you really enjoy to um, create music or, or play shows or, or those things that you truly enjoy and, and like you have to focus on some other things but I mean there's always a sacrifice mm -hmm. you know like yeah. um, so me and Kayla haven't stepped super far into that yet um, because it can be really intimidating like super intimidating um, to like move into the social media piece of things and start like promoting our music and like getting out there for more gigs and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Like that could be really intimidating, especially when you're like, what direction do I want to move in this? Is my music more for me or do I want it to be like something shared with other people? Um, Cause I think there's a balance between both that should be there too. It's like, you know, some things that you create, like you should create them because you enjoy them. Mm -hmm. And like, it could be more than just, for other people, but it could be something that has been given to you that you can like really enjoy for yourself. And there should be a line of like, you don't want to ruin that too. So boundaries are really important too. How do you think mm -hmm. you draw those boundaries? Cause I feel like you can make something really excellent and mm -hmm. you love it because it's, it's between you and the piece of music. How do you decide that's something you're going to share or that's something, is it literally like, I think people will love this and show up for it. Yeah. What's that um, look like? Honestly, sometimes I feel like it kind of gets dropped right in front of you where it's mm. like, you know, I think I'm really supposed to do this right now. Like, yeah, it's not it's not necessarily something where like I feel inside like I think people will really, really like this. 
some sometimes it is where it's like you know I think people might need to hear this like I especially with like music that I write I write things that are very close to my heart mm-hmm. um and so if I feel like other people are like struggling with something or that that might be useful that like I'm also going through then that might be a time where I share it but sometimes opportunities get dropped like straight in your lap where you're like I can't I it's it's happening mm-hmm. like it's gonna happen um and so that's kind of where I find like the boundary to be but if it's like something that's super personal but I know that like you know at this moment in time like this is where I want to keep it I want to keep it with me for right now like I'm confident too that at some point that if I'm supposed to share it it will be shared like yeah like I'm gonna get a prompting that's like you know what I really should share this and just kind of let your your gut tell you yeah yeah those good surprises you know what's a what's a surprise about Pueblo that you guys want people to to find out about when they come and see you guys for the music uh, showcase there's a lot of diversity there's a lot a lot of talented people because I always hear people say it's like well, there's not a lot going on down there it's like it's only this thing or that thing it's like if you just look a little bit mm-hmm. like you'll find something that you connect with like guaranteed and like it you know in this case it's music you know there's also talented visual artists you know authors it's like any medium of art you could think of somebody's doing something really cool yeah. so i hope that you know this showcase will let a lot of people you know see that oh you know there's something that i like that's going on here definitely yeah, I feel like a lot of people see Pueblo as a very dull place mm. or or OK, this is this is kind of controversial, but hot we get take. to see hot take. People think that we're like crime capital and like we just all we have here is like crime and mm-hmm. like just crazy stuff happened down here. And I feel like it's not that crazy. Mm-hmm. Like it's just a, a really it's a safe place. And I feel like I um, I don't know, I've grown up here and I really love the people here like one of the best things here are the people like the people make this place um it's why i've stayed you know and so i think um like i guess my advice is like people coming to pueblo like meet people um get to know people that are here Mm -hmm. like be um i guess like extroverted or like go talk to people because like we like we love people here and Mm -hmm. the community makes the place and you'll like find connections like you were saying with like other artists um and if you're just here for like the music and the food or like you're not an like an artist um there's plenty for you here too Mm -hmm. um it's going to be a great show there's going to be so many people that um are just going to blow your mind with their amazing talent um because Pueblo definitely has talent yes preach i love that so much and I think we need to, like, creatively, the, those voices need to be louder than the news voices mm-hmm. and all that bad media. Like, we just have a responsibility to put that out there. But for the people coming into town, what's your favorite spot? Oh. Like, what's your recommendation? It can be food. It can be, play, like, outdoor activities. What's your favorite place? Mm, I feel like I always tell people, go on the river walk. Because mm-hmm. then you'll find good food. And then, you know, you're just going to be in that area. You'll see good art like that's kind of like a good hub to mm-hmm. to show off a lot of different things in town so yeah that, it's yeah. a generic answer though give us like a, it, yeah, is. We know, <laughs> it is it is we want to know the hidden gems hidden gems uh well i always tell people about analog i think analog is yeah, totally. the coolest mm-hmm. place mm-hmm. because like I, I, you know you're telling people it's like well it's a record store and it's a bookstore and you can get something to eat something to drink it's like what it's like no it's all one place so i think that's super cool so, yeah that's sweet. Yeah. Um, I would say I'm a little bit biased, but I used to work at La Forqueta. I don't have you any of you guys been there? Yes. Okay. Their food is so good. Mm-hmm. So good. It's like a very small Italian place downtown. It's, it's so off cozy. of Union. Um, it is it's very cozy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh but by that time they should probably have like their outdoor seating open. Um, and so they're gonna be a place to be. I would definitely say um La Forqueta, go check them out. Um, Brews Ale House, they're a fun place to be. Fuel and Iron, mm-hmm. so good. So yeah. yes, Pueblo has great food. Yes, I love bragging about our food. Me too. Get some green chili. Mm-hmm. I feel like everyone always. That's a go-to though. You know, it's a uh, Pueblo and their food. You know what we haven't asked yet? What? What's your favorite state fair snack? Ooh. Ooh. Mm, it's the trying to think it's the the roasted nuts like Ooh, the cinnamon yeah nuts. those are really good yeah i always get those mm. and like the, the gummy bears 
Where do you get the gummy bears from? I don't know. I always, I <laughs> some random guy was selling gummy bears. I, I, I always like, I'm always like, I'm gonna go do this, and then whoever, most of the time I go with family. Yeah, my family's like, okay, we'll go get the food, and then they've got the secret gummy they, bear stash. I don't even know where they get them. I just, I just know that they <laughs> pop up in my hand every year. So okay, yeah. I'm gonna be looking for those. Yeah. Hey, you should, you should keep an eye out when we get stuff from there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you? Um. Okay, so I don't usually have a ton of snacks because um, if I'm going for the rides, oh, that's fair. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to like get sick. So, um, sometimes I'll get a lemonade. They're okay. Their lemonades are big. Mm -hmm. There, I love their lemonade. Super good. So I'm a big fan of that. And then everybody's always raving about like their barbecue that's like right on the very edge of it. Um, mm. and I have a distinct memory of my dad, like having like one of those huge turkey legs mm. and just gnawing on one of those. And those are like, my go-to every year. Those are good. Just like walk around with that thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love turkey legs. Um, do you guys know who Creed is? <laughs> the boxer of the band. The band. Ooh. So we're having yeah. a Creed off tonight. Creed of who can sing the best Creed? Oh, oh no. Yeah. No. You want to take on that challenge? <sighs> Come on. I feel like I have to. I'm a drummer. I'm you, a drummer. I, I, I Disclaimer. I'm a drummer. Just channel your inner creed real quick. Am I doing you this acapella? Yeah. yeah. Acapella? I'll give that, you some drums. Acapella is wild. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. I'll see if I got to do it. I got to like just go for it. Go what for do you it. got? Come on. I honestly, I don't know. You I don't know. Creed. No. Okay. I, I got the one. I got the line. We all know the line I'm talking yes. about. Yes. Okay. Can you take me higher? Yes. There we go. Okay, that That's might be our winner tonight. Yeah, <laughs> 10 out of 10 for sure. I love it. Um, so we want to hear about your worst story during a show. During like a show. the weirdest, worst thing that's happened. Hmm. It can be that's happened to you, that's happened in the crowd, mm -hmm. weird okay. venue, anything like that. Let me think. Well, it's not necessarily bad, but there's a, there's something we weren't expecting. Um, on our first tour with this lineup, um, this was in 2019, we went um, on tour the day after Christmas. Our first show was in Kansas, mm -hmm. and we played this venue called Skate Farm. But we got there, and it was it's it is it's a cool name. It's a really cool place, but it's it's a barn. Oh, it's just sick. an aluminum barn, and it was December 26th. Oh. Yeah, those vibes. And we didn't, yeah, we didn't really like, think about that. So we. You didn't bring three coats. We did. Oh. We did, but so, like, well, okay, like, uh, I guess we have to layer up. So mm -hmm. I, I think I played in a hoodie, two jackets, a beanie. I had sweats under my jeans, oh. and I was wearing boots, and I was wearing gloves. Actually, I had to take the gloves off because I couldn't hold the sticks, mm. and. I couldn't feel any limb that entire set. None of us could feel anything like. But we filmed it and we listened to it like after. Wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. So just body was numb, but it was doing the thing. Yeah, so it was like, okay, well, someone has to go stand with the merch yeah. so we can try and make some money. So it was like, okay, take shifts. All right, go in the van, turn the heater oh. on and just sit there for a second. All right, rotate out. So Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> That's tough. What about for you? Um, okay, let's see here. So the last time I played a gig, the weather was really, really bad too. I think that's like one of the, I mean, you can't, you can't change the weather. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, you can't control it. Um, and I think with like all of our, all of our gear that we were trying to get in to this facility, like it was just getting straight up rained on. And we were like, oh man, like this, this is, is not, this is not going well. And then you like, you prep and getting ready and everything. We're two girls um, mm -hmm. and every just like look like wind blown and like just a mess. And then we were the we were, I think, second up in line. Like we were a couple people for this gig and there was no, we did not prepare well. Like we didn't have anything with us to like like get reset up or um, like redo our hair or makeup or anything. So we just like went on and we were like, this is how it's going to be. Like, we so. love their look. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> So, so different. You have everything to make like a really good grunge band. Yeah. Like honestly, the name. <laughs> At that point, yes. Yeah. Slaughter. Yes. Slaughter. Ten percent. Ten percent. I love it. All right. So, with the future of um, both of your musical endeavors, you know, where do you hope to see personal growth, and where do you hope to see the community, uh, the greater musical community of Pueblo, grow to? 
That's a good question. Um, I feel like personally, um, I want to write more. I want to mm-hmm. write a lot more. And I also want to get more diverse in the different instruments that me and Kayla use um, during our performances, like adding more elements, like sounding a little bit more full, maybe even working on some songs together. Um, we both work on like separate songs and then collaboratively, like we'll, we'll like do them together. But um, we haven't worked so on a ton of um, collaborative music yet just because we're so new. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's something that we definitely want to do in the future. So I think that'd be a big growing thing for us. Um, and then the, the other thing with like the greater Pueblo community, I would say um, just that people like know that we're here, number one. And then secondly, that we're able to do something like this like annually and that we're able to like get the word out there to a lot of like we like we have great restaurants we have great food we have like a lot of the things that we need to be like more artistically successful but I feel like we aren't connecting and so maybe like this and um, other opportunities would give us a greater reason to get together more often collaborate on like not only helping like smaller businesses but also getting like artists names out there um so hopefully like this isn't a one-time event Mm -hmm. but that um people from pueblo like um will see like the talent that we have here and hopefully like invest in it and like you know who knows like maybe for a party or something like they'll reach out to somebody and be like hey like Mm -hmm. like we love you guys like come and join us if you would and yeah i think i think it'd be like really cool to see more of that happen here so definitely that was a very good answer. It was a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for for me, and I'll speak for my band as well, I just want to keep getting out there. We've been fortunate enough to tour quite a few That's times. That's right. Yeah. And we're going farther and farther um, each time and reconnecting with people we've played with before, meeting new people. And honestly, it, I kind of feel like we enjoy the fact that people like us like oh where are you from because they always assume we're from denver or Mm -hmm. springs like oh colorado denver springs that's it it's like no we're from pueblo like like that same thing like there's Mm -hmm. stuff going on here Mm -hmm. like and i feel like that's part of like what we want to do too is just you know share what we have to say and then also like say like this is where we came from and there's also a lot of other cool things going on there and uh yeah and i i just hope you know for the greater like like the rock community because there's a lot of heavy bands here like that's who we grew up playing with like mm-hmm. metal bands thrash bands all that uh is that you know we just keep having spaces to play because mm-hmm. i know even since i've been you know active in this scene like a little less than 10 years it's like places have been shut down and you know but people keep finding new ways it's like okay we're gonna have shows and we had shows in our basement when we lived in a house a few years mm-hmm. ago and then now we have the bomb shelter and it's like so i hope that the places we have now continue to thrive and that we see more places for you know all kinds of music to grow yeah i love that um where can the people find you online so we are the rage tones uh instagram twitter is at the rage tones co for colorado because for some reason someone already had the rage tones handle oh (laughs) please give it back give it back Um, and yeah we're on spotify apple music all the streaming services and we have some new music coming out in the next few months so very cool um and you can find kayla and i at naomi Ezia. um that's my handle and um on instagram and then kayla um it's like kayla gray slaughter um on instagram as well so yeah you should be able to find some of our music there yeah we're super yeah. excited for the showcase can't wait very excited to see y'all perform thank you for being here it's gonna be great thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah.